Hey guys, I'm back. And today I want to talk about a discussion I had with a woman who had repeated heart attacks and she kept going to the doctor and the arteries were clear. She had no obstruction and she didn't know what to do. So she wanted some advice. So I want to talk about what I told her. Okay. First of all, you have to realize that you can have a heart attack without having an obstruction to one of your arteries. And that is called myocardial infarction with non-obstructive coronary arteries. Okay. Not that you needed to know that, but there's two things that can happen. Number one is the actual heart muscle itself goes into a cramp or the artery goes into a spasm, obstructing the blood flow to the heart muscle itself, causing the heart attack. Now, what I told her to do was do some research in the area of vitamin E deficiencies. Why? Because when you have a deficiency of vitamin E, the need for oxygen in the muscle tissue, especially in the heart, goes up significantly, okay? So you don't have oxygen there, it starts to cramp. You also can get necrosis, which is breakdown of the heart muscle fibers with a vitamin E deficiency. You have neuromuscular degeneration. So the connection between the nerve and the heart muscle can degenerate. That can create a big problem. And another symptom you can have of vitamin E is you can have a myopathy, which is a disease of the heart muscle itself. In certain studies, vitamin E deficiencies in the blood were significantly higher in angina cases. And vitamin E is an antioxidant, and it's even carried by LDL, which is so-called bad cholesterol, that's carried to the blood vessel to actually provide healing for any lesions or oxidation that's happening in the artery because vitamin E is a very powerful antioxidant. It has functions for nerve conduction and neuromuscular control. Now, how does someone become deficient in vitamin E? Well, the biggest way is just to consume a lot of refined carbohydrates in the form of breads, pasta, cereal crackers, biscuits, things like that, okay? Normally, the grain is loaded with vitamin E. It's in the wheat germ. But when you grind the grain and you expose it to air, you basically oxidize all the vitamin E. So when you consume those products, you create deficiencies in your body. So I don't recommend you get your vitamin E from grains, even whole grains. I recommend you get them from the leafy greens and sunflower seeds, things like that. Or go to the health store and get a vitamin E complex. Don't use a synthetic version. Okay, get the complex because vitamin E comes in many different parts. And the exact fraction of the vitamin E complex that helps angina is vitamin E2, that fraction. And I don't even recommend just taking that. Get the whole complex and take that, especially if you have symptoms of angina or anything related to heart. Be very, very important. One uh, additional note I wanna bring up. When a woman uh, goes through menopause, she loses the function of the ovaries, okay? Now the pituitary doesn't have to work as much because it's not sending signals down to the ovaries anymore. So what could happen, the need for vitamin E goes down. So the pituitary is not storing vitamin E as much. And this could be one of the reasons why women are at greater risk for heart attack after menopause than before menopause. And what's also interesting is when you take vitamin E in its complex form, you can actually improve hot flashes, okay? What a coincidence. So anyway, there you have it. Do some research on vitamin E if you have any of these symptoms at all. All right, thanks for watching. Hey, before you go, if you're benefiting from any of my content, I would love to hear about your success story. Please share it in the link down below.